So word on the street is you want to know how I created the unique look of clear. Actually, that's mm -hmm. nobody asked me that. I'm just going to show you anyways. <laughs> Clear is this rain soap pavement filled with bright neon lights and smoky dark alleyways. I'm going to show you how I created the unique look of this world that Scott and I have created. What makes Clear have a different vibe from my previous work really takes a lot of planning and it goes as early as the layout stage. I use that stage to plan out the layouts, the paneling, and the pacing of the overall story. But since I'm coloring my own work, I'm also using the opportunity to use the tonal shifts of the script in each scene to really dictate the color tones of each scene. Here we go. These are the layouts for the book. And let's look at this from the overall perspective, not just the the details because layouts it's not about details it's about the overall picture the first scene has this blue feel to it it's it's got a it's got a blue tint overall and it's really meant to heighten the emotion of the character and blue is it's one of those weird colors that can be seen as sad or bright depending on the the saturation of it and in this case, I'm using it to give off this kind of sad vibe. Now, the next scene takes a color shift and it's now kind of purple. Actually, in the first panel, um, I tried to make the first one blue to slowly transition to, to the new color scheme, which is purple. Now, purple, the purple tone is one of my favorite types to use because it kind of skates the line of being warm and cool at the same time, depending on how you use it. So the first scene is blue and the second scene, which brings us all the way to page 17 is purple. And you can really see the shift there now. What's complementary to purple is green, which is why the Hulk is purple and green. So to me, it made sense for the next scene to be green. Green also has this unsettling vibe to it. It's also giving off a really creepy feel, which is why a lot of horror movies have this color tone. It gives off this unsettling, unnerving vibe. Now, the last scene, brings us to this noir world. I'm also using blue on it, which is very similar to the opening scene because I wanted to bookend the entire issue. But as you can see, if you've picked up the first issue, that's not the color tone that I use at all. Now, these color tones are subject to change as I'm working on the book. And it often does change because sometimes these tones don't work. Once I get into the details of each panel, suddenly it's not giving off the, the proper emotion that the scene needs to evoke. So in the final scene, I actually went with something warm because I realized the entire issue actually has this very somber feel. It goes from blue, purple, green, and blue. So when I got to the final scene and I started coloring it, I gave it this warm vibe because we're now coming down to earth, whereas the first half and the bulk of the issue has this futuristic vibe, which is, you know, neon lights, dark, moody feel. I wanted to give the final scene a dark, moody feel, but also a sense of warmth. We're now entering Dune's home slash office. That color scheme is meant to lull the readers into this false sense of security just before we pull the rug in the final page. Scott wrote an amazing cliffhanger. I needed to level up my game and make sure that anything that I did in the issue is there to enhance 
the story and make sure to evoke the emotions and feelings that Scott is trying to accomplish in the issue. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I did the neon lights. And this is actually super simple. It's going to take no time at all. Uh, these are the line work for the light and beneath it is the glow. Now there's two ways we can go about doing this. Um, okay, so this is actually quite a simple process. And first we're going to create a new layer on top of your artwork. I typically just use a pencil tool because it has 100% opacity. There's no soft edges. So let's say this place is a pizza joint. Okay. So pizza. Okay. So there's our neon lights. Um, actually here, let's, let's create a box around it. And let's write 24 hours. Okay, so there's our line work. The next thing I do is I create a new layer underneath it and I go to the brush tool. And these are just standard brushes in Photoshop. And I use one with a soft round edge. And what I'll do is I'll pick a color. So I don't know, let's say right now the background is pink. So to create better contrast, you know, using color theory is pink. If pink is around here, it makes sense to pick something green to, to give it a high contrast. So let's try that out. So what I do is I'll just simply draw in the highlights. I like doing it this way because I have control of the color and the amount that goes into it. And I could even kind of make certain areas brighter than others. Okay, so there's your neon lights. Now, that's one way to do it, but like I said, there is another way to do it. Let me show you that. So going back to the original layer with the line work, when you double click that layer, this box pops up, which is the layer style. And what you wanna do is pick outer glow. Now you can see that it's set to screen. It's quite strong. And you can play with it by moving this slider up and down to increase the amount of glow around the, the neon lights. And over here, you can even pick the color that you want. Now, it's, it's actually quite effective and it, it kind of looks a little bit better than how I did it, to be perfectly honest. There you go. There's, that's how I draw neon lights. So if you still haven't checked out the book, head on down to Comixology and either purchase the book through that or you know what? The better deal is get Comixology Unlimited. You can read it through the Comixology app and the Kindle app and you can gain access to my books and a slew of other books that Best Jacket has to offer. You can read tons of books with this simple subscription, even though you should read Clear first. All those other books are still there. They're available for you to check out. Okay, so the last trick, or not trick, the last technique I'm gonna show you is how I use gradient maps to color scenes. As you can see, this is the final scene of the issue, and we're walking into Dune's office, and I really wanted to nail the noir feel. So I wanted to focus primarily on value rather than color. Sometimes color is a little bit hard for, for me to wrap my head around. So I decided to color it in black and white first. Gradient Maps is this really neat feature in Photoshop which allows you to set up parameters of colors. This is the scene and this is it with the color gradient. It's super moody. It changed the whole vibe of it. And then I added a little bit more tones here and there just to, to strengthen the scene. And then this is where I actually added the colors. Okay, so let's remove all of that. And I'll show you how I use the gradient map. So let's, let's turn this thing off. What I do is I go down here where you can create a bunch of color adjustments and I pick gradient map. These are just some of the standard looks. I actually created a bunch of custom LUTs, I guess. If, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're, you're probably very familiar with the term LUTs, which is a lookup 
table, or rather a color lookup table. People use it all the time to color grade their video. And in this case, I'm using a similar technique to color grade my comic book scene. In the later issues, you'll see these color tones pop up here and there. Let's start with a blank one, okay? To understand gradient map, what we're seeing right here is the range of tones on the image. The left is black, the right is white. So let's say I want this scene to be blue and red, okay? So we're gonna go here and click on the black and we're gonna pick we're gonna pick a blue. Let's let's pick a desaturated blue. Over here, all the way on the right, the brightest point in the image is white. But what if I want it to be red? So now, when you're looking at the entire color tone, Photoshop is essentially assessing the value from black to white and changing those values to these colors that I've instructed it to, to use, and you can see that it's affecting the overall image. Now, the cool thing is when you click on any other areas, you can add different tonalities. So what I, right now, what I'm telling Photoshop is the darkest grays and blacks, I want it to be blue. But let's say I want the medium grays to be, let's say I want it to be purple. Okay, so let's pick something like that, and I can move this thing around, okay? So you have the red right here. Let's say I don't want the highest highlight to be red. Let's say I want it to be yellow. Okay, so now, now there it is. Now I can also move this around to move that color scale around as well. Now, if you look in the middle, there's these little nodes that you can also use to shift the color around, okay? So now I've created this, this vibe that is purple and blue and red. And going back to the original, you can see that it's only in black and white. Now, this is a great base for your color scheme. And I use this all the time when I'm, I'm struggling with the color scheme of the scene. And what's kind of neat is going back to this gradient map. If you like this tone that you've created, all you got to do is click on new and it saves it right there. So in the future, you can go back to it again. I've essentially told Photoshop that, hey, these are the colors I want you to replace the gray tone values with. And this is a really powerful tool in setting up a vibey mood. Vibey mood, that's, that's not a word. Okay, so that's basically it. The unique look that I've accomplished in Clear is, I believe, much more cinematic than my previous work. It was important for me to match the dramatic writing that Scott is really hitting with these stories. You're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to apply these things to your work. Thanks again for watching and like and subscribe if you found this helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Give me all of your life.